participator rather than a participant in the current negotiations, uh, I'd like to make a few observations. It is very striking to me that though Sinn Féin was the party that brought these institutions down such as they were, that nonetheless the pressure and the expectation is that it is unionism which should rule over in these negotiations. And that, of course, is consistent with the process of which these negotiations are a part. Because they are spawned by the Belfast Agreement, which, of course, is premised upon the eventual end of the Union. Hence, the urging and expectation that unionism should assist that process by making endless concessions to keep the insatiable, namely Sinn Féin. We were told for many years we had arrived at a solution. These were stable institutions. Of course, none of that was true. There were only ever transitory until it reached the point where Sinn Féin could obtain further concessions to advance their end goal. And of course, the absurdity of that is that these are institutions which can only exist courtesy of the grace and favour of a party, Sinn Féin, which doesn't even want Northern Ireland to exist. Uh, hence, the situation where it is constantly unionism that is ruled, compromise is required, and that compromise, of course, is paying more to Sinn Féin's demands to allow them to remit a government to return. Now, what a scandalous situation this is. And my advice to other unionists who are involved in these negotiations are in the famous words of Richard Kipling, don't pay the Dane Geld. Because as Kipling articulated, once paid, you never stop paying. And that, I think, is where we're at. Uh, and where it goes to, I know if it goes according to the script, according to the Belfast Agreement script, then it'll be another humiliation for unionism uh, by to obtain the grace and favour of Sinn Féin to allow government in Northern Ireland. It's as scandalous and ridiculous as that. And frankly, if that's the only sort of storm which is available, then would be far better to shut it down. British rule, to me, is far preferable to Sinn Féin rule. That, I fear, is the choice we're going to. Do you think there'll be a deal in the coming days? I think there's a desperation on the part of parties looking for power, any power, uh, to, to pay a price. But I think the price is so escalating, and I think it is so clear it won't be the last price to be paid that I'm hoping that some unionists will realise that they should not be paying the Dane Geld in this situation. There's a question mark as to whether or not there will be an Irish language act. There's been the ongoing dry in these talks. What is your view on where we are now? Well, there's absolutely no need, requirement or justification for an Irish language act. No one is stopping anyone learning whatever language they want. That doesn't mean we need a French language act, a Spanish lang language act, languages which actually are useful in the commercial world. But instead we have this demand for an Irish language act, an Irish language sector which is already overfitted in generosity. It is its own education system. It is its own north-south body with executive powers. It's had over 200 million pounds of funding in the last few years, and yet it wants more, more, more. Why? Because the whole agenda of an Irish language act has nothing to do with linguistics. It has everything to do with politics. And the politics of a weaponized demand for an Irish language act is about de-Britishizing Northern Ireland, making it more uncomfortable place for unionists in their own land. I'm very clear, therefore, no unionists should be conceding anything in that regard and needs to stand firm and not pay the Dane Gale.